there are different grades of material enjoyments in respect to duration of life and sensual gratification. The first highest plane of sensual enjoyment over the longest period of life is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita 9.2. All are but material enjoyments, but <clears throat> one should be thoroughly convinced that he has no need of such a long duration of life, even in the Brahma Loka planet. He must return home back to return home back to Godhead and must not be attracted by any amount of material facilities. In Bhagavad Gita 2.59, it is said that this sort of material detachment is possible to attain when one is acquainted with the supreme association of life. Param Drishtva Nivartate. <clears throat> one cannot be freed from material attraction unless he has complete understanding of natural spirit, nature of spiritual life. The propaganda by a certain class of impersonalists, the spiritual life is void of all varieties, is dangerous propaganda to mislead the living beings into becoming more and more attracted by material enjoyments. As such, persons with a poor fund of knowledge cannot have any conception of Param, the Supreme. They try to stick to the varieties of material enjoyments. Although <clears throat> they may be, they may flatter themselves as being Brahman realized souls, such less intelligent persons cannot have any conception of the param, as mentioned in this verse, and, and therefore they cannot reach the supreme. The devotees have full knowledge of the spiritual world, the personality of Godhead, and his transcendental association in the unlimited spiritual planets called Vaikunta Lokas. Herein, Akunta Drishta, Drishti is mentioned. Akunta and Vaikunta convey the same import. And, and only one who is who has his aim fixed upon the spiritual world and personal association with the Godhead can give up his material connections even while living in the material world. This Param and Param Dharma mentioned in several places in the Bhagavad Gita are one of the one and the same thing. One who goes to the Param Dharma does not return to the material world. This freedom is not possible even by reaching the topmost loka of the material world. <clears throat> The life air passes through seven openings, namely two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, and one mouth. Generally, it passes through the mouth at the time of an ordinary man's death. But Yogi, as Ebo mentioned, who controls the life air in, in his own way, generally releases the life air by puncturing the cerebral, cerebral hole, hole in the head. The Yogi, therefore, blocks up all the Ebo mentioned seven openings so that the life air will naturally burst forth through the cerebral hole. This is the sure sign of great devotees leaving the material connection. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Shall I read the verse again? Thereafter, the Bhakti Yogi should push the life air up between the eyebrows and then, blocking the seven outlets of the life air, he should maintain his aim for going back home, back to Godhead. If he is completely free from all desires for material enjoyment, he should then reach the cerebral hole and give his material connections having gone to the Supreme. So, in this chapter, we, we find how the advice is given, how to give up the life fair. This is especially applicable to those who take up the yoga known as Dhyana Yoga which is also taught in 6th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, very similar, Ashtag Yoga. But this is Dhyana Yoga. Now here Sri Prabhupada explains that at the time of death, that's a crucial time, one should be able to give the material con connections and accept the spiritual connection, which is already practiced. So this verse is showing how one should give up the life and now we find that uh, if you read Bhagavad Gita in the chapter 2, the soul floats in different airs. The names were given, Udana, Apana, Vyana, Samana, Vyana, and ultimately Prana. Prana, Sri Prabhupada, in another lecture he says, Prana literally means oxygen. As far as the oxygen is there in the body, still the soul float will, I mean, the soul will float. As soon as the oxygen is exhausted, the soul has to live in the body. Now, many, many of you may be confused by this verse. What is this cerebral hole? If you see our skull in between, there's a partition right in between here. 
and the yogis, they prepare, especially those who practice Ashtanga Yoga, Hatha Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, may not be very Krishna conscious, but on a mechanical pro process, then it's not an easy way to give up this, the life. I was told that even the yogis, when they want to give up the life, they will tell other yogis that please help me. Because sometimes the life air will come right up to here, but it doesn't have space to go or go out. So they use a coconut to break it here and allow the life air to go. So this may seem to be very cruel, very technical. We devotees don't need to worry about all those things. Because in the eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Arjuna, devotee does not have to consider so many things. If you remember the verses, Krishna says, a yogi who dies in front of fire in the daytime, in the auspicious time, when the sun is coming towards the north, he does not come back. And if a yogi dies in the smoke or in darkness, he goes to the moon, stays some time and comes back. But later on, Krishna tells Arjuna, devotees not, should not be worried about all these things. Anyway, we have to learn certain things which are Prabhupada is explaining. That if before the death comes, whether you are practicing Dhyana Yoga or Ashtang Yoga, in our Krishna consciousness, we practice Bhakti Yoga, seriously. And Bhakti Yoga, the desire for material enjoyment must be given up before the death. Rather, it should be given up much more before that. Otherwise, you, you cannot move forward. Because if as far as the material attachment is there, these are called anarthas. These anarthas must be given up. Otherwise, they become obstacles in your spiritual life. You can't move forward. If you recall, we had done this verse, which is quoted, I think, in the fourth chapter, verse number nine. You know, in the ten, Vitaraga Bayakriya Prodha. In the purport, there is a verse, Adho Shraddha Sadhu Sangha Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivrati. Now, Anartha Nivrati means sense enjoyment and material connections. Give them up before they hinder in your devotional way. So one must give up this desire of material enjoyment. So there are different gradations of sense and material enjoyments in one's duration of life. There are people who take pleasure in doing so many other things which are not related to Krishna. And they are called the material enjoyment. Or one may have something which he can't give up. For example, one is very addicted to some kind of a pleasure with his senses. He can't give up. Unless he accepts a higher taste of Krishna consciousness. But most people want to enjoy senses even after that. It's very nice to mention the ninth chapter, how the highest pleasures can be obtained by going to Indraloka. Indraloka is a place where there are beautiful gardens. Nanda Nanda are the gardens. Angelic women, wine, long life. As soon as the pipe is finished, then Shine Punya Mriti Lokam Vishanti, you fall down again here. You can't stay there permanently. But a moment in Krishna consciousness is more valuable than any kind of sensual enjoyment, even if you can go up to Brahma Loka. Brahma Loka is the highest. It's the planet of Lord Brahma, where people live very, very long. And there is all chances they can go to Vaikuntha after annihilation. But devotee doesn't even desire for that. He simply wants to serve Krishna. And whatever may happen, he wants to go back to Krishna. And Krishna is telling all of us that for this giving up sense enjoyment, material enjoyment, a detachment has to be there. Detachment is called Vairagya. Vairagya means to detach from material connections and become attached to spiritual connections. And if you become connected to spiritual connections, 
then you are a fortunate person. And if you stay on that platform, then each moment you enjoy, I mean, you live in Krishna consciousness will become like nectar. That's why <laughs> in the Srimad Bhagavatam it says <laughs> two different verses. A moment of enjoyment one gets in association of a sadhu is a million times greater than any sensual pleasure. And a moment one enjoys in Krishna consciousness is the highest one gets. So one may think, what is that pleasure? Ask anyone who has been practicing for many, many years how much pleasure he gets in practicing Krishna consciousness. Even in simple activities like hearing, he enjoys kirtan, japa, remembrance of Krishna, day-to-day -day life, and how he could feel the presence of Krishna. He actually literally is dependent on Krishna. So it's not impossible, even if it is possible in this material life. But you have to have a good guidance of your spiritual master. With strong faith in Krishna consciousness, you can get that pleasure. That's why a moment of Krishna consciousness is higher than any sensual enjoyment. So without taste of Krishna consciousness, this detachment is not possible. Those who are accustomed to hear Sri Prabhupada, Prabhupada says, without giving up the low, I mean, without accepting a high taste of Krishna consciousness, you cannot give up the low taste of material enjoyment. It's just not possible. So you have to take up the higher taste of Krishna consciousness. The higher taste of Krishna consciousness, if you want to know it with logic or technically, it means you have to actually rise above the three modes. What is the proof that you are going beyond the three modes? I mean, your practice is beyond the three modes. You'll find absence of two things, lust and greed. They'll vanish from your heart completely. No more lust. You see any women or a woman seeing any men, there'll be no sense of lust. There'll be rather another way of seeing that everyone is a part and parcel of Krishna. <laughs> and that everyone is trying to become Krishna conscious. And I so I should also try to practice Krishna conscious and improve my Krishna consciousness. So there's no question of lust. And there'll be no greed. One is content with whatever Krishna gives, whatever little Krishna gives, you'll be happy. So it's very rare to find such uh, devotees who are on such a platform because it's not easy. To give up lust is very, very difficult. To give up lust, uh, even at an old age, is not easy. Or to talk of young age, not just young age, maybe halfway, 50 years old. If there is a determination, I don't want this, then it will take a few more years and you can give it up. But you have to give it up with a strong desire in your mind that I want to give it up then it is possible. <coughs> so Krishna, uh, Shri Prabhupada has quoted this verse, Vishaya vine vini vartante neha rasya dehina rasho raso api raso arpam pram dishwa na nivartate oh, sorry, pram dishwa nivartate I think it's 259 in the Bhagavad Gita that if you have accepted or enjoying the higher taste of Krishna consciousness then all the taste of this material world seem to be puny, insignificant, has no value. And you find there's all oh, people are wasting time just for the small things, which give you pleasure maybe for a few minutes. And then again, you are the same. So people know that these pleasures, they come in and they go. While Krishna is explaining Karma Yoga in the fifth chapter, Karma Yoga and Krishna Consciousness, he says the devotees or the yogis, they seek higher pleasure <coughs> by surrendering to the Supreme Absolute, who is also known as Rama. Krishna is also called Rama, and Ramachandra is also called 
Ramam. So, uh, those who are like yogis, they actually meditate upon the very name of Rama or Krishna. The name itself is very sweet. Ramante Yogino Anante Satyananda Chidatmani. Then I forget. So, uh, sorry. So Rama Padaneshu Param Dishwa Something like that. I'm forgetting the second line. So in that verse, he says, Ramante Yogino Anante. Those who are yogis literally means devotees. Yogis here refers to devotees. They play. Ramante means they enjoy. And they enjoy practicing Krishna consciousness so much that they are constantly meditating about the lotus feet of Lord Sri Rama or Lord Sri Krishna as per their choice. So this is a very beautiful verse. And for them, material pleasures, the verse itself, though, it says that all material pleasures have a beginning and an end. Whereas spiritual pleasures have a beginning and no end. They continue. And you can, they endure for the end, of, till the end of your life. Or even more than that. You enjoy more than that. Just like anyone is accustomed to chant very nice sounds. And one of the days he's so busy and he chants, doesn't chant very nicely. At night he feels very, very upset. He said, I have chanted my rounds, but I did not chant very nicely. So again, next day he becomes very strict and tries to chant to the best of his capacity. Now, this is just talking of chanting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have a bit of a flu. <clears throat> so you'll find that. Even we devotees can attain this platform. So detachment is possible by attainment of a higher taste of Krishna consciousness. Now, the higher taste means a platform which is beyond the mode of tamas and rajas. No more mode of ignorance, more, no more mode of passion. Accept goodness and beyond goodness, Shuddha Sattva. Then you can practice Krishna consciousness. And that is at the Brahma platform, also called Vasudeva Tattva. At that time, you can't forget Krishna. You'll always be with Krishna. So without completely getting an understanding of spiritual nature, you cannot give up the material affection. It will still linger with you. Even slight attraction can pull you down. And you want to enjoy it. You think that, oh, I used to enjoy this and it has come again in front of me. Let me enjoy it till everything finishes. No, it doesn't happen like that. If you try to enjoy it again, <coughs> the enjoyment will accelerate and you are the one going to be at loss. You won't, you will give up your spiritual life. You will be dragged to enjoy material life. So here Sri Prabhupada used in the purport, without getting a complete understanding of spiritual nature, you cannot give up the temporary material attraction. It's simply impossible. So you have to get the taste. You find that many devotees, even in our school, they chant for years and years. They don't give up. Then there are those who are beginners. They find difficulty. Those who are halfway, the struggle is still there. But those who have got the taste of it, no more struggle. Even they have beads in their hands or not beads in their hands, they constantly chant the Hare Krishna. And they are aware that forgetfulness of Krishna is the biggest loss to me. And the easiest way to keep up or keep a contact with Krishna is to chant all the time. <laughs> Now, these things cannot be understood by an impersonalist. Because impersonalist, he cannot understand the varieties we enjoy in, spiritual, in the spiritual life. For example, if someone comes to take prasad, especially Rajabog at our temple, or even our morning breakfast, it's so nice that you see such a big variety. 
and you want to enjoy it. And you enjoy it. And you sometimes if you're new, may you may think, oh, these people are having a party daily. It's such a big variety. Three to four kinds of subjects, two to three kinds of rice, sweet rice, then maybe kadi, maybe dal, then salad, chutneys, sweets. So they think, oh, this is more better than anyone going to a restaurant. Because the restaurant cannot give you such a big variety. Because the restaurant may give you, but most restaurants, the food is served is in the mode of passion, not in the mode of goodness or pure goodness. This is Krishna Prashada. So anyone who has eaten or tasted, he cannot forget the taste. Now I'm talking of Prashada. <laughs> Same thing. <coughs> In your spiritual experiences, you'll find that many times you're trying to remember something and you try very hard, but you can't remember. But by the mercy of Krishna, everything comes back. And then what is your response at that time? You'll thank Krishna. Oh, I've been trying to think of this and I can't remember. But how come I remembered everything now? So you find this happen even in your life. And many things for which you are working very hard. And Krishna, if he doesn't want you to take it, you won't get it. That's why try to learn to depend on Krishna. If you learn to depend on Krishna, you'll enjoy this reciprocation. A devotee, reciprocation with Krishna. So impersonalists, they may say, neti neti, not this, not this. They try to eat very simple. They say, if I try to eat fancy, then maybe I can be Diverted from my meditation, from Brahma. Brahma means the impersonal <coughs> Brahma Jyoti. And they try to forget it. But for a personal, it means for a Vaishnava, Krishna is there in a person. And there's a whole variety. Many, many pastimes, a devotee in choice, even just in meditation. You may have heard of uh, one uh, incident of Raghunath Das Goswami when he was in Radha Kund. He would, oh, he would only take chash. I think everybody, know, everybody knows chash. What do they call buttermilk? Uh, and he lived like that. So one day he had a diarrhea. So the doctor came to check. And the doctor said he has eaten some grains. And the villagers said, he doesn't eat grains. You see, he doesn't eat grains. Is then how did he get diarrhea? <coughs> <coughs> now, the only person can answer that was Raghunath himself. And he recalled that one day, he had offered sweet rice to Krishna. And then he was enjoying the sweet rice after offering to Radha and Krishna. And when he ate it, that's where he got the diarrhea because he, he overate it. So in the the Vedic doctors they check you with touching this part of your body, your arm, and they can tell you what went wrong where. So when Raghunath Des said like that, he said, I ate that kheer or sweet rice only in meditation, but I actually got the actual effect of eating or tasting. So this is a very nice incident. It can explain to you how we devotees, all devotees have their own experiences. And as you hear them, you find how close they are to Krishna. So they may, those who are impersonalists or Brahmavadis, of course, they are also transcendentalists. They actually cannot get the sweetness, the sweetness with the devotees get. <laughs> the devotees get a lot of sweetness. Many times Prabhupada gives this uh, uh, what do you call it? an example. It's like licking the outer ball or a bottle of a honey. You can't get the sweetness till you open the cap. But the devotees actually get the taste of honey because they have tasted the honey. So when you're practicing Krishna consciousness, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> you actually enjoy. 
the sweetness of Krishna consciousness. So, how to attain Vaikuntha is first of all to become a personalist. Rather than flattering yourself and becoming too proud that I am too happy with my Brahma realization. You know. <laughs> if you know that the four Kumars, even they used to think like that. That there is nothing beyond Brahma, Brahma realization. But the day they go to the association of Narada, their understanding changed. And when they actually saw Krishna, their life completely changed. They became Vaishnavas. So there is a whole parampara in the name of Sanat Kumar, known as the Kumar Parampara, connected to Krishna. So here, two words I explained. <coughs> <laughs> parab, param and parab, Param Dhamma, both are the same meaning. Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Parama Bhava. That verse appears in the 10th chapter. I think it's 12 and 13. It refers to absolute truth. And also two other words, Akunta and Vaikunta. The meaning is the same. Any Sanskrit word, if you put A in front, it becomes opposite. Viprit, Viprit means just the opposite. So, Akunta means not Vaikunta. So, if one is able to enjoy Krishna consciousness, practice Krishna consciousness, Vaikunta is waiting. The Param Dham is waiting. It's also called Paravyoma. All refers to Vaikunta. <coughs> <coughs> so, before the death arrives, especially for the yogis, who are not practicing Krishna consciousness, or those who may be practicing Krishna consciousness, meditating on Vishnu form, they have to be <coughs> very, very careful before they leave their body. <coughs> Shri Prabhupada says in one lecture that when the death comes, even of a yogi, it's not easy, very, very difficult. To give up his life air becomes very difficult. It is better to become a devotee. Even if you die in a normal way, it doesn't matter. Krishna takes care of you. So in the end, Sri Prabhupada here mentions that before the death comes, when you are going to die, the life air passes through the seven openings of the head. The eyes, the nostrils, the ears, and the mouth. <laughs> And generally, it's a release between the eyes. <coughs> and for the yogis up here, from the cerebral hole. So, yogi endeavors very hard. And he also has to fix a, a certain time. They have to live very long. And generally, yogis live very long. They live, they, they calculate the time that this is the right time. And then they give up their body. This is a yogic way of quitting the body. But devotees are not in an anxiety to do like that. Of course, devotees are aware of all these things. Just like when we hear the, we, we have heard already earlier in the first canto how Bhishma Pita gave up his body. Bhishma is, always, is as good a yogi, more than a yogi, because he's a bhakti yogi. How he chooses the perfect timing. And how he detaches everything from everything, attaches himself to Krishna. He invests his thinking, feeling, and willing into Krishna and then gives up his body. Fixing his mati, mati means intelligence, and mind on, on the form which he loved so much, the form of Krishna as part of Sarthi. Uh, when Krishna becomes the chariot of Arjuna, that form was very, very dear to Bhishma. She meditated upon that form and gave up his. And it's not that he was not aware of other forms. Because in one of the prayers, he also glorifies Krishna as very, very dear to the gopis. It, know, it means that Bhishma Pita knew all the affairs Krishna even had with his highest devotees known as the Popis. But he was very much attracted to the form of Krishna, who was riding the chariot of Arjuna 
as it is arjuna was very dear and krishna also was very dear so you know even in our case we have to become attracted at least to a pure devotee you know you know it's called if you all become attracted to shri prabhupada we are safe till you don't become attracted to prabhupada how will we practice what is sahi if you are very much attracted to shri prabhupada then whatever prabhupada says you will accept it nobody can cheat you and everything is open clear black and white in the books as you read the books there's a whole confirmation and at every step each each of your endeavor is confirmed in the books itself so there's no question of confusion so for us everything has been simplified all we have to do is to follow the instructions of the acharya and to the best of our capacity practice of krishna consciousness for the rules and regulations vidhi vidana and go on practicing the vaidhi bhakti whether you reach the raganuga or not don't be worried but your vidhi bhakti should not be given up even if you reach a very high level to teach others the rules and regulations of bhakti yoga is very very important so the the, the purport is aiming that by practicing krishna consciousness naturally you will get a distaste for material enjoyment or sense enjoyment and you cannot give up material enjoyment sense enjoyment till you become connected to become uh, to enjoy krishna consciousness practically so when you is practically enjoying or practicing krishna consciousness then he can understand this or put very nicely and he can understand that when the death comes what has he has to do is to think more of krishna if you remember at the end of the first canto uh, there is a question asked by maharaj parikshit to sukhdev goswami that and that is the whole answer to the whole bhagavatam the question is what should a man who knows is going to die what should he hear what should he chant what should he remember whom should he worship four questions and the whole bhagavatam is based on this four all the answers what should hear about krishna what should chant the name of krishna what should remember krishna and what should worship krishna if you are doing these four things you are safe and that is the same meaning of man mana bhava mat bhakto mat jaji mam namaskaru so this is the way we practice and we can leave these material connections very quickly i mean very easily just like when we go to pass stool or the to toilet when you finish your job we just flush we don't need to look behind we just look forward and this is how krishna consciousness is practiced uh in detail hari krishna any additions anybody would like to add something or any questions if you have any suggestions there were bad throat i have a bit of difficulty in speaking Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, we can see, see you having uh, the throat uh, problem. We don't want to hold you too much. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, any any questions or comments, <coughs> Prabhuji? This uh, 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 when we heard this purport, um, there's a difficult process mentioned in the beginning uh, by Shukadev Goswami of how mm. one should uh, uh, you know attain spiritual uh, uh, enlightenment and then leave the leave this material world in a in you know, almost uh, practically difficult way for our, for all of us to to attain but uh, here uh, we are you know propada has given a very simple process uh, yes. to to practice you know just anybody can any child can practice or uh, uh, anybody can practice as propada used to say yes, yes. propada gives example of bishma narad before he became narad how he quit his body if you remember the example he quit his body like a lightning thunder and lightning lightning doesn't last you in few seconds he gave the old body you get got the new body but reward is as fast as that and elsewhere i was also 
hearing one lecture by a very senior devotee says, <clears throat> for a devotee, a practicing devotee, if he goes through difficulties at the last moment, is good for him because it will purify him. So if a devotee is suffering, maybe even bodily suffering, and maybe any other problems, is this to purify him. So we should be ready for both, either for a quick death or for a very long staggering death, that we struggle and struggle and then we die. We can never know how we are going to die. At least an indication is given here. Then in either, either case, remembrance of Krishna is very important. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, uh, we don't want to hold Prabhuji because he's having some uh, issue with the throat. No, today is much, much better. Oh. Last three days I had a <laughs> difficult. Though, though I did cold? all the past. Is it cold in Nairobi, Prabhuji? No, there was some cold period, very cold air. That uh -huh. so many people got this infection. So many people. Like in my own family, my grandson, my granddaughter, my wife, me. I was the last one, but I also got the infection. It's flu. The doctor says it's a viral infection in the air. Good. Yeah. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, despite you not being able to talk, but you, you hold on uh, delivering this class. Very nice, very nice explanation. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself. Thank Hare Krishna. Mataji, you can just close the session uh, so that you know. <coughs> yes, yes, thank you. So we learned a lot about um, today, about how our life airs. Um, we can, uh, the yogis, how the yogis manage to make the life air go through through the uh, the 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 head and the top of the head, so I don't get the word right now. So, yes, yeah, thank you, Prabhu. Cerebral go whole, and Prabhu, you have explained nicely how devotees should not worry, and how Krishna has arranged everything. And uh, yogis, they are not ordinary people, also. And but uh, when we practice Krishna conscious, we need not to worry about any any such thing. So, thank you, Prabhu. And I will also request everyone please to unmute and let's say uh, chant Hare Krishna for, for Rukma Prabhuji to glorify him for this nice clause that he has given despite his ill health. Thank you. So let's, let's say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare 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 Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.